I'm Veronica Herrera. Thank you Above Ground Art Supplies for hosting this wonderful demo session. Um, I am an artist, a demo artist with Liquitex Education Program. And I'm also a faculty member at the University of Colorado, Denver, where I teach painting and drawing. Um, so today we're gonna talk about acrylic gouache, professional range, and the characteristics of it and how it differs from traditional gouache. And I'm also gonna walk you through a painting, an abstraction uh, that you can try at home and go through some of the materials that you can purchase through Above Ground Art Supplies. And so if you'd like more information about um, where to find more demos like this, uh, then you can go to aboveground.to to look for um, more demos that are coming up in the future. You can find more information about Liquitex products through um, Liquitex Official, and you can also find some samples of my own artwork at Veronica Herrera 791. So today we're going to be working uh, with the Liquitex uh, the recycled canvas. Uh, I'm going to be working today on the uh, smaller format of five by seven. However, uh, above ground art supplies does carry the 11 by 14 size, which is a wonderful expansion on this um, smaller scale that I'm, I'll be using today. The nice thing about the recycled canvas is it's made with uh, recycled plastic. And on each uh, canvas, you can find the amount of plastic bottles that is used to create each canvas. It's stretched the same way that a traditional canvas is stretched. Um, so if I flip this over and take this little label off, you can see that it's stapled just the same. It's made also with sustainable wood. And so um, it does, uh, it is F SC certified, which prevents deforestation. Um, there is fair wage and work environments for creating these canvases. Um, there is, uh, procedures in place to protect plants and animals in those forest areas that wood is harvested. And um, also we uh, work to make sure that communities living in and around forests are consulted so that their rights to the land and forest resources are respected. So it's nice to work with a company that uh, cares for people and the environment and the products. Um, so getting started, we're going to work with again, acrylic gouache. Now the difference between acrylic uh, gouache and regular gouache or the Windsor & Newton, our sister company um, gouache is that traditional gouache is made with a binding um, binder of gum Arabic and um, acrylic gouache is made with an acrylic copolymer just like the other acrylics in the soft body and heavy body range are made out of. And so when the acrylic gouache dries, it is permanent um, and not soluble any longer, unlike the traditional gouache, which is essentially a watercolor and soluble, and it will break apart once it is re-wet um, on the surface. Um, so we will go ahead and squeeze out some paint. The reference image that I'm working from is here. Um, my inspiration for these shapes came from string lights, a picture that I took here of string lights outside um, on a tree. And you can see the little um, halos that occur um, taking photos of these colored lights at night. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to squeeze out some of the sky blue on each of these, I should mention the uh, new packaging for the Liquitex professional grade uh, acrylic gouache, as well as the soft body range, both are now being packaged in these squeeze tubes for ease of access. The caps can be popped off and there's a squeezy nozzle here. Let me turn it to the side so you can see. Um, you can trim down the nozzle to make it shorter, which then uh, increases the aperture of the nozzle and you get more paint coming out of it. You can also pop the top back on and twist off the container's lid so that you can access all of the paint with a palette knife. 
and the sides of the bottle are flat so that you don't have to worry about paint hiding in the corners of you know, like a rounded edge container. You can access all of it. Um, it is the same amount of paint as the traditional tubes. So it's still the two fluid ounces that you're purchasing. Um, it's just a different format um, that is going to allow you to, a little bit more control over how much paint comes out. And again, access to all of your paint so there's less waste. And you can also uh, use the empty container to store your custom paint colors that you create and squeeze those out as you wanna work. So we'll start off with some sky blue. Put a lot on here. Um, also wanna note that the sky blue is um, pigment based. So that means that the particles are less resistant to ultraviolet rays. Um, fading the color or bleaching out the color with ex uh, exposure to sunlight. Um, on the side of the bottle, you'll see a square that will indicate the opacity. And with the full colored in square, that means it's fully opaque. Um, and it also has a series one um, rating, which means it's excellent for um, light fastness for this range. Moving on to the fluorescent yellow acrylic gouache. This is now dye-based, which means it has smaller particles of color and it is soluble in water. It does um, adhere itself to your substrate or to your surface that you're painting on. And um, it is naturally going to uh, be vulnerable to UV rays. So you want to be careful to store or display your artwork that is um, used with fluorescent colors in a non-direct UV area so that you don't get such a shift in, in color saturation. Um, same goes for the fluorescent opera pink we'll be using today. This is a semi-opaque, so you'll see the half colored in square with that. These fluorescents are not rated um, for life, light fastness. Uh, you'll see the NR symbol here uh, on the side. Open that. Great. And then for the brushes I'll be using today, I'll be using the Liquitex Freestyle number six and eight, but you can also purchase the Windsor Newton one stroke half inch and three quarter inch brushes available through Above Ground Art Supplies, which are the same sizes and will work just great with acrylic paint. Um, also available, you can purchase the uh, Liquitex Freestyle um, palette knife to, for mixing. It does come in a, a set of, of several different lengths and shapes for you to work with. Um, and so I'm I'm working with this little diamond shape, medium size um, palette knife for, for today, since I'm working with a small cell, scale canvas. Um, so first thing I want to do is just kind of create some, some random color um, placements or some little circles randomly placed on the canvas. And what I actually did was decide on tracing one of the caps of my acrylic gouache, since it was seemed appropriate in scale to what I was working with. You can certainly freehand these and you can find inspiration for your abstract works with just looking around your daily surroundings and, and seeing what kind of draws your eye in. I'm really drawn to colors, you can see that I'm working with uh, a Windsor and Newton color pencil. It's a, it's a nice option for tracing. And that if I were to use graphite to trace, sometimes the graphite mixes with my colors and kind of mutes them down a bit. So the yellow kind of hides it a little easier with my paint covering it. Let's 
here. Maybe a couple more. I really like the overlapped areas that show it glows of color next to one another. Okay, so now that I have my shapes traced, um, I do want to go ahead and start painting in my colors. Now, since <clears throat> the fluorescents are naturally more transparent, I don't want to paint the whole background blue because then the blue will want to show through my colors. I have a sample swatch just to show you the transparency of the fluorescence compared to the opacity of the sky blue. And you can see this is the acrylic gouache uh, swatches painted over the Liquitex Basics uh, Mars Black. And just to, to show you how you can use the transparent colors with glazing, if you wanna mix um, background colors with um, colors on top, or if you want full coverage. All right, so I'm going to start with my small brush, which is, if you're using the freestyle, it's the number six, or if it's your um, the Windsor & Newton brush, it's your half inch brush. Um, just a, a note about the brush bristles themselves. Um, when you clean your brushes, you may get a little bit of staining and that is fine. It doesn't harm the bristles themselves, um, even after a really good clean. And, and they, they will, uh, work just as a, a regular brand new brush. Um, the other nice thing about these uh, paints are that they are fluid in nature, so you don't have to add any water to them. They're ready to go out of the container. I'm going to start with some fluorescent yellow and just start painting in this circle. And I'm not too worried about staying in lines. I mean, I, I kind of plan on, on changing the shapes of these a bit after I work a little bit through my painting. You could definitely make this your own in terms of shapes. Like maybe you are really interested in triangles or squares or even taking a still life of uh, set up some objects and use those outlines of your shapes to fill in with colors. And that would be just as interesting and exciting for an abstract painting like this. Okay. And next I'm going to just clean off my brush and grab a new color. going to mix uh, a little bit of the yellow with the blue to make some green. And it doesn't take much of the blue to shift this yellow uh, to green. So I just need a little dab. A little bit more. I like to use my palette knife to mix colors. Uh, just so that I can swirl around my palette knife on my palette paper and not uh, have the paint kind of creep up to um, the top of my paintbrush and get into the metal part of my brush called the ferrule, um, where it is a little harder to clean. I'm going to squish down my palette knife here. All right, have a little bit of that green. Now I do live in a dry climate state, so these paints do dry pretty fast where I am at, but you might find if you live in a more humid place or if your weather pattern is in more of a humid state due to rain, or snow, for example, then your paints may dry a little bit slower.
Now these acrylic gouache paints will dry to a matte finish just like your standard gouache paints. Um, so you, you'll you have that same um, clean look that does not reflect the glare of a flash if you're taking a picture of your work. So it's, it's really great for color blocking, illustration design, scanning in images, as you won't get that the uh, glare from a, a printer that might flash as it scanning your images and digitizing your artwork. All right, I'm gonna clean my brush off and create some, I think I might, a little bit more cleaning off my brush off to the side. Grab some fluorescent pink. Love these pops of color. So electric. And now I'm going to mix a little bit of orange with my fluorescent pink and my fluorescent yellow together. Use my palette knife. And I don't need much because I just have one circle. Grab a little bit of that orange and just lay that right on top. Now, once I finish painting in these circles, I'm gonna work quickly to subtract highlights out of them before they completely dry. Uh, with acrylic gouache, they do dry to acrylic polymer finish, just like your standard soft body and heavy body acrylic paints, so they are no longer soluble. And it just makes it harder to subtract if you want to take out some of the paint. So now I'm gonna, I wet my brush, and just dab a little bit of the water off on a paper towel or a rag, and then just go in and scrub off a little bit of color with water. And this is giving the illusion of highlights on each of these little spheres, you know, like half moon shapes. They kind of remind me of gumballs. But I'm just cleaning, cleaning my brush in the and my jar of water in between each subtraction so that I don't get colors mixing accidentally. One more to go. Veronica, we have a question. Yes. Can you speak on the difference between acrylic gouache and heavy body acrylic paint? Yes, heavy body acrylic paint is a thicker consistency. It's not going to flow as as much, so it's a it's a it's a heavier uh, viscosity. Um, so let me go and have this is a actually have a heavy body acrylic here, uh, and I can show you what the flow looks like. Um, on a paper. <clears throat> I 
So this is the heavy body and you can see how, th how thick that pours out and it holds its peaks. Um, very um, thick and lots of pigment in the heavy body range, just the same amount. Uh, they're both professional grade, both the heavy body and the professional grade acrylic gouache. The difference in drying with uh, the heavy body uh, Liquitex paints is that the Liquitex heavy body will dry to a satin finish. So you have just a little bit of a shine to it versus your gouache, which will dry to a matte finish. And you can see how, how kind of buttery that just pours out of the nozzle. And it drips on a, a bit. The consistency or viscosity of the gouache is in between your inks, which are very fluid, and your soft body. Here's me just kind of pulling the paint across the surface. And the gouache also hides the brush strokes of your paint on your surface. So it'll dry to a nice flat, even color, whereas your heavy body uh, will show every ridge of your brush stroke. So it's great. The heavy body is great for impasto, which um, shows the thickness of your paint on your canvas and your gouache is gonna be great for smooth design work. Brush real quick. Okay, great question. The um, gouache is also available um, in 50 colors. So there's a, a good range um, of them to choose from. And there's four sets. If you're looking to buy a set of particular colors, there's uh, primary sets in the 22 milliliters. Um, also in the 59 milliliters, there's a 12 color palette set um, in the 22 milliliters and a fluorescent set of, of six in the 59 milliliters. I'm gonna just paint in my background now. But I also, I kind of wanna change the shape of my circles a bit, kind of black them in in a little bit more rigid shape. Got a question? Yes. Uh, can you mix the gouache with the regular Liquitex inks and or uh, acrylics in the tube? Great question, oh. thank you. Yes, these paints are mixable with the entire Liquitex range of paints. So you can mix acrylic gouache with acrylic soft body. Um, you can mix them with the heavy body paints. You can mix them with inks. Um, you just wanna think about what is it you want to achieve with your uh, painting that you're making. Um, so if you want a matte finish, the gouache is the, uh, the way to go. Um, if you want a satin finish, your soft body or heavy body is the way to go. However, they're all very versatile in that you can change the finish or sheen of any of the Liquitex paints by adding medium to them. So if I wanted, for instance, I'm, I purchased a gouache set I want a section of my painting to be glossy. I can then add a gloss medium to some of my gouache colors and it won't alter the permanence um, of my paint. It'll just make my gouache now a glossy so finish. The solid bar Liquitex varnish on top of it once it's dry then. Uh, yes, you can varnish your gouache. Yes, um, and, and same for your soft and heavy body, which which dry to, oh, let me change to my, my face so you can see. Uh, same for the heavy body. If you want your uh, satin finish to now be matte finish, you can uh, varnish with a matte varnish and then you'll have 
a matte look to everything. Um, and then and you could flip flop and change. So say you have one area where you mixed in some gloss medium and one area where you have matte finish, but then when you finish your painting, you decide, oh, I want it all to look the same. Change my mind. <laughs> you can okay. then varnish in a matte, all to just make everything look the same uh, instead of uh, what you've started with a mixed mixed sheens. And then make iridescence too, be gouache. Yes, yes. Uh, and I have some of that too. I can definitely show you what that would look like. Is there any over. advantage with it, I wonder? Over yeah, yes, yes. It's okay. wonderful that you can have that versatility with uh, paints. Um, so I have here some Liquitex iridescent medium. Grab a canvas, a little scrap of paper. And then I can pour out some of the iridescent medium here. You can kind of see it has a, a little bit of a sheen to it. I can grab some of my gouache and mix that in and you'll create this metallic look with my paint colors. You see that glistening of it. And you could do the same with any of the Liquitex range uh, mediums. Like I mentioned, there's a, here's a gloss, uh, gloss medium from Liquitex. Uh, if I want to change the paint sheen of my of my uh, Liquitex wash to be shiny, then I can mix that in. And that's going to dry really shiny, more so than the satin finish, right? Because this is this is gloss now. Let's see, Let's see that. Bit. We'll let that dry a bit, and maybe come back to it and see what that looks like. It may dry pretty quickly. Maybe dry by the end of the demo. <laughs> yes, great question. Yes, I love that. Uh, you can start off with any. Uh, type of Liquitex ac acrylic paint and change its sheen, change the viscosity or thickness of the paint based off the mediums that you add to your paint. Let me grab a clean brush. I'm gonna grab my, my bigger three quarter inch brush and continue on with my blue. And with these thicker canvases, you can choose to paint the sides or you can leave them. I'll turn this around so you can see. Can we mix up our own uh, acrylic gouaches as well using the ultra matte medium and uh, soft body acrylics? Um, you can change the sheen um, of your uh, of your paints. So essentially, yes, it will have the same look as your uh, gouache. Yes. What proportion would you suggest? Um, you, there isn't a, you can never add too much medium, right? It, what will happen if you add a lot of medium is you're just um, thinning out the amount of pigment in your, your paints. Uh, so, but it's not gonna break down your paints in any way. So you don't have to worry about um, like the durability of your paints with your medium added. Uh, compared to like uh, mixing or thinning out your paints with water, since water is going to break down your paints. Uh, and then if you add too much water, then it will uh, possibly uh, not let the paints adhere to your surface um, as well and last as long as if you were to use medium. So mediums are recommended for thinning out paints and increasing the viscosity um, versus water because it's hard to know how much water you're adding um, versus uh, mediums. All right, I'm just kind of making these a little bit, a little bit blocked out. Not so circular anymore. 
kind of like that rigid quality. And you could even translate this concept of, of lights in the dark to things like headlights of a car, um, string lights in your house, or candle lights uh, that flare, uh, LED candle lights now that, that are out that have these wonderful glows. And I like these thick, chunky brushes that kind of allow for a little bit more um, spontaneity and abstraction, a little less control uh, versus the smaller brushes that are, are made for detail work and be a little bit more in the realism style of painting. All right, so you can see it's oh, a little bit of pain, a little bit on the sides. <laughs> so we can, I can either let this background dry completely or I can work wet on wet, which means that the background is still not dry and introducing a second color on top would then mix with my background color all the way. We just give it a chance to, to dry for a minute and I will show you a, another piece that I worked on on, on the same canvas. And just show you the effects. This is the same sky blue and this is with the fluorescent pink layer on top. And then at the end, I'll go over uh, the exterior contours with the fluorescent paints and create these interesting halo shapes. Let's see, do we have a question in the chat? All right. And take on the fading of the fluorescent series. Um, what is the light fastness of the of the fluorescent range? Is that yes. What type of fading do you ex would you have to expect from them? Okay. Uh, so the fluorescent range, um, and it it's not yet rated for light fastness, but it is very because it is dye based. Um, it is is very uh, susceptible to fading. So what I recommend is just avoiding direct sunlight. Uh, you will see the the colors themselves losing its vibrancy if it's put, like for instance, outside uh, in direct sunlight exposure, um, you'll see that, that uh, color change um, pretty rapidly because the dyes are small particles uh, and then the ultraviolet rays from the sun do tend to break down uh, those, those pigments um, and start the fading process as opposed to um, break down those dyes as opposed to uh, pigment-based paints, which are, are not going to have the, the fading that happens with dyes. Um, so um, the best I can recommend is that you uh, showing your work away from direct sunlight. Um, I have my work stored um, outside of a direct window um, or in a hallway. I also, if I'm going to display my artwork in a sunny area, I can opt for framing with UV resistant uh, glass, uh, which it's it works great for, especially if, if you're working um, with, I got a painting on paper and that you can mat and frame under glass so that it's got a, a protection uh, over it and the colors will, will stay vibrant longer. Um, each of the Liquitex colors are put through um, a UV 
testing um, called the Blue Wool Scale Test, which originally was developed for textile industry, but is still used today in determining how light fast colors are. Um, in that UV chamber, there's of over like about 400 hours worth of UV light uh, is then determined um, what uh, light fast uh, number each each paint is is given. Um, again, with the dyes, they're just a, just more vulnerable to UV light, and uh, they're they just need to be um, cared for a little bit differently because of that. Uh, they they can be mixed with your soft body, with your heavy body, um, with your uh, opaque colors that are light fast. Um, and what will happen is the fluorescence will drop down in saturation, but your uh, light fast colors will remain. So for instance if, instance, if I've mixed the fluorescent pink with my uh, white, then I will get you know, a lighter tint of pink. And then after exposure to a lot of sunlight, you get a, a much paler pink um, uh, over time versus um, just a, a, the pink completely becoming uh, transparent and no other color remaining on your canvas. Um, I hope that a question answers your question. With your iridescent gouache, do they use mica flakes like uh, they do in regular Liquitex acrylic uh, iridescent paints? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, anything that has that mica or like that sheet metallic sheen, yes, that is what's okay. causing the uh, that sheen uh, mixture, that kind of uh, shiny finish, um, that reflective finish, a uh, kind of opalescent sheen um, with the with the mica particles in it? That's a great question, yes. Uh, any other questions? I have a question, Veronica. Yes. You, you talked about um, doing a halo effect around your circles. Just how do you, uh, do you do wet on wet to create that or do you have to let it dry a bit first? You can do both. Um, I did, a a little bit of um, experiment with uh, wet on wet, which will then activate the blue and then mix in with my colors in my circle, circular shapes. But um, I also did uh, a painting where I let my background dry first. And what happens with the transparent colors is it, you could still see the background through it, through the colors yeah. and it yeah, doesn't yeah. mix. It sits on top. It's similar to um, my color swatch studies I did um, that show the transparency of, of the fluorescent colors. It just sits right on top instead of mixing it. If I were to mix, for example, the, these fluorescents with my black still wet, I would get shades mm -hmm. of these colors. So it would, it would create, um, it was like mixing black with my pink and black with my yellow. Uh, so it's a little bit different. Uh, you would get a, a softer transition of a halo versus a harder shape, uh, but either either way will work. It's kind of up to you with what effect you want to achieve with with those paintings. Okay, so it, it would be easier to use the transparent colors rather than the opaque colors to get that translucent kind of effect, right? Um, yeah, uh, transparent colors do allowed the more opaque colors to take over and and then mm -hmm. and mix the two together uh, but you can certainly mix opaque colors with another with more opaque colors as well wet on wet uh, we can experiment with that now Ooh, i can okay. show you yeah Thank see you. Thank yeah you. let's take a look right. okay so the blue is still wet and you can kind of see the little glossy parts of of the wet areas and now just to see what will happen with wet on wet and color. Let's grab some fluorescent pink and then place that right on top of my blue. And you can see, see how my blue is mixing in and making violet, but it's also 
bringing it into my orb shape, converting my pink to violet color, which is cool, cool effect. Now, if I didn't want so much violet happening on this, I can add more pink just to balance out how much purple is on my circular shape. So I'm going to rinse out my brush, grab more of this fluorescent pink, and then deposit it right on. I can just have a little bit of an even mixture of uh, the bright pink versus the uh, red violet and the purple. I still want that highlight to stay, so I didn't go over that part there. there. Now there are areas that are a little bit more dry. I think around my green, the blue has dried. So then I that's a great moment to see the layering of a tr transparent or semi-opaque, a fluorescent green over the blue. And you see, I'm kind of there's dry brushing over my green and it's not picking up the blue. It's not mixing. It's staying pure. So that's a nice feature. And again, I can mix more of that green. I kind of do more layers on top of this if I wanted my green to stand out more. I can even make my green a little bit more opaque by putting more of the op opaque blue in with my green and make a darker green or more blue green in the middle. I do the same over here. Now this this paint on this side is a little wet still. So we're gonna get that that mixture of wet on wet happening on this side of the painting. And again, if I don't want this to be so dark creeping into my center, I can clean off my brush, grab the pure green mixture on my palette and add that in on top. Like that, put it in the center. And if I accidentally say go over the whole thing, I can still subtract out my highlight. So it's very uh, forgivable and you can have this, this time to work with subtracting paint or even correcting mistakes uh, with acrylic paints before they dry to a permanent finish, uh, gouache included. You know, I can subtract out that highlight. And then, all right, so let's, I guess we can continue with just all of these glowing colors, and then I'll paint my background. Now, this is interesting. It's the wet on wet also with this yellow. So I'm getting a little bit more of the green mixing. Paint my brush. You could see that my brush, you could see where the green has mixed from the yellow and the blue coming together. It's nice to kind of see where your painting goes with abstract work and maybe not be so um, tied to what you were expecting the end result to be, but just allowing some of these fun uh, color mixes to happen and decide um, what you're gonna let remain out of like these little unexpected paint mixtures or what you're gonna like 
correct later. And then finally, we got orange. Grab a little bit of the fluorescent orange. The orange and blue being opposing colors on the color wheel. We do get this chromatic black happening. in that orb. All right, I may just clean off my brush on this overlap area. Otherwise I will get a, a brownish chromatic black on top of my yellow. So I'm gonna make some more of that orange color. A little bit more yellow, a little bit more pink. Just go right over. This up so you can see. There's after my background, I, I do want to still go over the entire area of blue. So I can shift that over to the violet. Um, I want to do that because violet being the darkest color uh, of the color spectrum or the color wheel, um, we, we tend to read that as deep and further back in space. And so that will help bring out forward these circle shapes. And I can also change the shape of these halos while I'm painting the background as well. I had a question about the acrylic in the spray can. Will that uh, adhere to the gouache satisfactorily? Because I noticed with the regular acrylic out of the tube, I've had some uh, difficulty with that. Uh, yes, uh, you can mix spray paint uh, which is spray acrylic, essentially. Um, it's just a little bit uh, more fluid so that it can come out of the nozzle with ease. It will um, mix fine on canvas. Um, or you can spray a puddle of your spray paint and then mix in some of your gouache if you wanted to so that you can have that color interaction. Like say, for example, all you had was uh, the fluorescent yellow and the fluorescent pink in your gouache and you happen to have a can of the sky blue in your spray paint <laughs> and you can definitely mix that spray paint blue with your acrylic gouache you'll have a different you know a different finish because you are mixing the sheens but you'll have all the colors that you want to create i meant once uh, the wash is completely dry because i've experienced um separation when I've used uh, the spray can paint on dry um, liquid text it, it, it comes apart or whatever I mean. is is the paint if the spray paint um, I wonder if that's a, an issue with the like the, the uh, temperature of, of where the paint Maybe that's it. yeah yeah because uh, I do tend to see uh, paint that that uh, can change its durability if if the canvas is is uh, in a really hot uh, storage area also super cold uh, storage area uh, letting those those colors come back to room temperature uh, does help the the paints uh, not want to uh, break apart as you're describing with with the uh, spray paint added so I find that too with a non-liquid text spray paint, but just the uh, your standard spray paint from the hardware store and, and spray painting outside in direct sunlight that will sometimes tend to, to crack, um, especially where paint is puddling, or if you sprayed a little too closely in, uh, to your surface of your object, um, it, it will have an inconsistent dry time 
with the thickness of your spray paint. And so the thicker layers of spray paint will dry uh, a slower underneath and faster on top because the, the surface is heated and can create these, these cracks. So it, it's it's best to not spray in, in, in such high high temperature area, I suppose, just, just so you can avoid any inconsistencies in, in dry time like that. Any any questions about mi mixing the gouache with with mediums? I could yes. yes. Sylvia mentioned liking casein paint, if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, do you have a medium you would recommend to recreate that pasty texture with the gouache? Oh yes. Uh, so I believe the casein paints. Uh, you're looking for kind of like this. Uh, what's like a like an encaustic almost, like a matte finish. Is that correct? Maybe uh, like a milky, perhaps, finish? Yes, we have uh, the matte the matte gel medium um, does, does give your paints uh, a thicker, milky, I want to say this encaustic look. So it's, it's very... Um, it's got that thickness to it that I, I find similar uh, to what you're describing that you want to, that effect you want to achieve. Um, and so you could definitely mix that with your acrylic gouache paint and not have any problems with uh, the longevity of the paints, you know, lasting. Any other questions? Nothing in the chat, but if you have any questions, feel free to just say it out loud. Okay. <laughs> Let me switch back over. Okay. So you can kind of see this is starting to dry. This is the gloss media mixed in with the acrylic gouache, and it's still very shiny. And it's going to dry this way because of the gloss medium, whereas this is just uh, heavy. This is the gouache with iridescent um paint and you could start to see the the shine in it uh, uh the medium use, oh go ahead can you use like a water to gouache like a glaze or do you have to use is it better to use a medium on it um you can thin out your uh acrylic gouache with mediums just fine um but you don't have to use water to thin out your paints because they they pour out of the a bottle um, in a fluid viscosity. So you don't mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to add water to them just like like you would with normal acrylics. So let me like squeeze some of this out again and see. Like they're they're very fluid um, compared to the heavy body or your your gouache where you need that water to help the the paint go across your surface without resistance. Okay. Yeah. So it's it, it the more transparent the paint is, then the better. Like if you want to just use it like a glaze, so you're going to see the some of the color coming through. Oh yes, yes. So we do have uh we do have matte uh, medium. Um, let me change to the front uh, camera. We have matte medium, and then we also have matte gel. So the matte medium is going to be a, a more fluid, and then the gel is going to be a thicker consistency and dry to show those ridges in your paint. Um, mm -hmm. Either way, you'll have that that thinning effect that you are wanting to achieve without having to worry about using too much water. Uh, I tended to use too much water myself, and so I'm super happy to discover these mediums that can move me away from my excessive use of water because <laughs> uh, I tended to work with acrylics uh, like watercolor, having learned painting first through watercolor. And now I'm super happy with my results using mediums that create a creamy, transparent layer, uh, layer over layer and not have to worry about like these, the breaking up of particles. And like I, I could see some 
little graininess on my finished work. And I always wondered what that was. <laughs> and okay. so I know it's not good. <laughs> yeah. Use a medium. All um, right. Yes. And then to, if you want your paints to, to stay wet longer, I know I get that a lot when I am, am talking about paints and especially with acrylics with my students, I will most times use a wet palette, uh, which uh, let's see if I have. I think I have one around here. Um, it is a a little tray that has comes with a sponge that you wet, and then you put your palette paper inside it, and it will create this wet barrier that will keep your paints wet. Um, for me, it kept it for weeks wet. Uh, so it's so nice in living in a dry climate to have my paints stored, not have to scrape off my palette, store it in a, a separate container, and then. Um, you know, unscrew it, have more stuff to wash and clean up, um, but just open that palette and be ready to go where I pick up where I left off on my painting. Uh, so that might be something that you can use. There's also a uh, a wetting agent that you can add. There's a, so you could spritz onto your palette that will keep your paints um, from drying out too quickly. And you can mix that with any of the Liquitex paints. Um, it's essentially like using a medium um, in its very smaller quantities uh, to slow the drying process of your paints. Okay. We have another question in the chat. Would you say that acrylic gouache is more suitable for contemporary abstract art painting rather than realistic painting? Actually, it it just depends on your finish like that you want to achieve. Uh, the acrylic gouache is going to dry to a matte finish. It's the same amount of paint that you would be purchasing in, as your heavy body and soft body. So you're not compromising like the amount of paints. You can be free to, to use larger quantities of it. Whereas traditional gouache, um, gum Arabic based gouache, those are for smaller, more detailed works. Um, because they come in smaller tubes, they're highly concentrated in pigment and you're slowly diluting the paint with water as you work. Um, so you can definitely do realism and abstraction with gouache. I just happen to, I, I love abstract painting myself and one of my works is behind my head now. Um, and, and so I thought I'd demo just something loose and basic so that people can get excited about the process and experimenting with colors and not feel like you know, if you don't, if you're not comfortable with realism, you don't have to jump in and only work with acrylic gouache with realism, uh, because it's it's definitely versatile and you can use it for both realism and abstraction. It's just a, a difference in in the sheen itself. They're probably they both dry to that uh, polymer permanent finish once they're dry, and so you don't have to worry about like a small amount of water getting on your painting and then your paint's running down the canvas. May we see all of your painting that's immediately behind you? Oh, let's see if I can move my camera up a bit. Uh, I don't know if I can zoom out. I can kind of move my camera a bit. <laughs> There's the side of it. Sorry, my camera doesn't quite fit. It's so. much better, uh, like bigger than <laughs> expected. <laughs> it's a 36 by 36 inch. Uh, piece and it's it's a diptych that I have in my home. Uh, yes, it's it's a large scale. Um, I did use the Liquitex uh, soft body. Um, actually used a lot of the Liquitex basic acrylic uh, tubes for the large areas. Now the difference between the basics and the professional grade are that there's just a, a little bit more of the pigment in the professional grade and you'll see the, the labeling on the bottles that indicate that, uh, but they are still light fast. So you don't have to worry about uh, these fading any more that you're within your professional grade. Uh, so I like to use a lot of the introductory range basics for when I'm doing large backgrounds, like the painting behind me, and then I'm not so worried about <laughs> the money involved, right? <laughs> like, you know, cause it, as an artist, you're always worried about how can I make my paints go further um, and so the basics is a, it's a good range uh, of paints to let you paint. Would you large. Call your, oh, I'm sorry. Would you oh, call no, your ahead. painting? What is it called? 
the monitor. <laughs> Of the painting behind me? Yeah. Oh, it's just it's an abstraction. I was thinking about a similar concept of what our painting is about today. Um, these kind of candy colors, these uh shapes moving in space. Uh I, I tend to gravitate towards colors um and and shapes that make me feel happy and, and they're kind of biomorphic and and they can be more than one thing. So it's not necessarily based off of a particular subject, but just more of the interaction of color play and repetition of pattern and shape for me. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? No new questions right now. Okay. Um, let's see if I missed anything else. Um, yeah, so I let me switch to the my painting and we can see how that's drying. So pretty much I can touch this now and it is it is dry to the touch. There's just maybe one area here that is just on its way to completely being dry. But um, just like your standard gouache, the acrylic gouache dries pretty quickly unless you're adding uh, a medium to slow that drying down. Um, when sometimes people ask me how, how slow will the paints dry if I add a slow drying medium to them, I would say they add about uh, they dry 40% um, slower than your standard paints, uh, but that you would have to ideally create a test on your own wherever you live to see exactly how long the drying time is for your geographic location, because my drying time may be a little uh, faster if I'm in a dry climate versus if you're in a humid climate, uh, that kind of thing. So creating a test, you know, check on your paints every so often and see how long did it actually take uh, for your paints to dry? All right. Um, yeah, so even if like say my painting now at this stage, if I wanted to go over it uh, again with another transparent layer of the pink, I can do that just to maybe create a little bit more of a red violet color can grab more of that pink and layer that on top. I can change direction of my brush strokes a little bit to create like this dabbled effect throughout. And while my paint is wet, if I work a, a little quickly before it dries, I can even scratch into my surface and get these interesting textures. Like, scatter some of this about and then use uh, my palette knife to scratch in. So then I can take my palette knife I see the, the scratching happening. Zoom in a little bit. is a scraffito effect where we scratch into wet paint color, revealing the background. Now this is, is only possible with the wet on wet. Now once your paint is dry, it's not gonna move on you because it's dries to that permanent finish. But say if I didn't like this, I could squash this down and quiet down how much scratchy texture or apply more of this fluorescent pink and smooth it back out. I changed my mind. So it's it's kind of a, a fun way, you know, if you want to play with textures, you experiment with your palette knife with acrylic gouache. Uh, see what what texture you're happy with um, and not feel committed to like 
one style or, or one texture. And, and it's kind of freeing knowing that you can make your changes as you're painting. Yeah, all the scratches are gone, <laughs> primarily. Like, it's a little bit there. Yeah, a really big change uh, when I bring over my other painting that I didn't put another layer of fluorescent paint, more of the blue pokes through. And so it's, it's more of a violet uh, mixture happening on this one versus that second layer of fluorescent pink, it really shifted the colors quite a bit. Veronica? Yes? Is gesso re a preparation recommended before starting a gouache painting? Ah, yes. Uh, so gesso creates this barrier between uh, the paint that you're going to apply and your surface. And so what that does is it, it prevents your paint from seeping into the fibers of your canvas that is unprimed. And so you're using less paint because some of that paint's going to get, you know, absorbed down. Um, and it, and it, it does create a, a smoother surface for you to paint on. So if you want high detail work, uh, then it does create a nice smooth surface for you to not have to scumble over the, the texture of the weave of a canvas. And so uh, a lot of artists will paint a few layers of gesso. You'll paint one layer, sand it down, paint in the opposite direction, another layer, sand it down, and just repeat a few times till you get this really smooth surface to paint on. While other people enjoy, enjoy the texture and like that texture coming through in their work. And so, uh, it's it's an option for acrylic users. You don't have to gesso with acrylic paint like oils because oils uh, will eat away at the canvas. It'll degrade the, the the canvas fibers over time. Whereas acrylic, it dries to like that polymer acrylic finish and in your surface should be fine. You can also mix in acrylic colors and inks with your gesso to create colored gesso backgrounds, which is an interesting option. Yes, question. Oh, David, you're muted. Still muted, maybe. Do they make um, liquid protect gouache interference colors? I think they're called. They're shiny or effulgent at one angle and not on another, something of that nature. You know, I, I know we have the iridescent medium that will change the color sheen. Um, These are interference, I think they're called. Okay. I Let me check on that for you. I know what you mean. It's like a metallic. Um, it's like when when light hits the surface, it, the paint will seem to change in color. Is, is that what you're referring Something to? Something like that, yeah. I think, I think our similar um, uh, effects would be the iridescent medium, uh, which is a little different than what you're talking about, which is the interference range of mediums. But I can definitely check on that and answer that question more clearly. <laughs> Uh, this question has brought up uh, has been brought up a lot and we have answered in the chat but maybe you can say more clearly um what are the substrate you would recommend for a quill gouache oh uh, well you can work on you can work on paper of course like 
just like you would watercolor. You can work on canvas. And it, it is essentially like a matte acrylic. So anything you would use acrylic for, you can use acrylic gouache for. Yes. Perfect, thank you. Yeah. Is there any other questions? Suddenly got quiet. I think we're good. <laughs> okay, that's good. Wonder, okay. wonder why liquid text. I'm reading the chat here. Discontinued the interference. Just um, uh, um, moving towards sustainability and um. Moving towards uh, non-toxic paints, some of the paints that we found were not holding up uh, over time were discontinued. Um, so that could be a, a factor in that, but I let me write down your question. And uh, so the inter ooh, interference colors. And that way we can I can find out those answers for you. Um through Liquitex. Oh, someone said in the chat they were discontinued a while, six years ago. Okay. Thank you. All right, so let me. So that's what we have going on so far. Um, if you're just joining us, this painting, abstract painting, was created uh, with the inspiration of working with uh, lights taken uh, at night um, and the little glows or halos that happen around colored lights and, and kind of getting inspired, but that's not trying to replicate this necessarily, but using this as a concept and a starting point for working abstractly. And so I use the caps off of these easy bottles to trace little circles. And then from there, shifted my circle shapes to these more rigid shapes. Uh, so they're not perfectly round. Cause I, I like, you know, just playing around with um, not being perfect in terms of circles and not looking so exact like manufactured but more blurry and uh, nondescript as to exactly what the identity of the objects or shapes are taken from I like that mystery and that like multiple at least two multiple interpretations um, of the painting um, and like I mentioned I did trace these shapes with the yellow color pencil just so that's outlines themselves wouldn't peek through. I do have an example of a painting that I did with graphite and the graphite lines are showing through. You could see that happening here. So if you if you didn't like that look, you could go over your graphite with a little eraser just to lighten that up so that you don't see them so heavily. Or like I mentioned just color pencil tends to work just great for outlining your subject before you go in and start painting uh, with colors. Let's see. Let's take a look at the gloss finish. I don't know if you could see that sheen. Oh yeah. You could see the shininess of of the gloss, sorry, I wrote down my note here of interference colors, but uh, this is the gloss medium mixed with the Liquitex gouache. And notice the gouache is very flexible. Like I can still bend this paper. It's not gonna, the paint's not gonna crack. Um, whereas traditional gum Arabic gouache, if the paint was applied this thick, it is susceptible to cracking uh, with this thickness. Um, but that's not normally what artists use traditional gouache for. They usually use gouache in very thin, flat layers uh, to build up color. And then cracking isn't an issue. 
in that way. It's only when you want to work in pasto that you want to switch over to um, soft body, heavy body, um, gouache, something that is uh, acrylic polymer based and not gum arabic based. Um, yeah, any other questions? Okay. Yeah, um, so well, if there's not that many questions, we can start wrapping it up. <laughs> sure. If, uh, again, if anyone wants to find more information about more paint demos, um, where you can buy supplies, you can visit aboveground.to. Uh, you can find information about Liquitex products at Liquitex Official, and then you can find me on Instagram at Veronica Herrera 791. Uh, all of these products are available. Everything you mentioned earlier, there's a coupon code that you can apply to buy the products shown today uh, and start experimenting with fluorescent gouache colors. I do want to mention the gouache, uh, the fluorescent colors do come in the other Liquitex uh, types of paint. So you can find fluorescents in the inks. You can find them in the soft body as well as the heavy body paints and basics. So you can mix uh, all these different viscosities of paint with the ink being the most fluid, uh, the gouache <clears throat> again in between the viscosity of ink and soft body, soft body a little bit thicker and finally heavy, heavy body holding its ridges in in the paint itself. <laughs> Thank you, everyone.